Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by the channel. It is Takedown Talk, episode three, and today we're taking a look at the Tucson Knives TS-232. Let's get into it. Why the Tucson TS-232? Well, for me, it's simple. It's because it's unique and unusual. The design is one of my favorites in a titanium frame lock. The uh, elongated hollow ground blade widens toward the tip, resulting in something of a leaf shape. Uh, this allows you to pinch the blade for deployment if you are somewhere where you'd rather not flip it. Uh, the steel we have here is Sandvik 14C28N, and in my opinion, it's one of the very best budget steels on the market right now. And sadly, we're not seeing it used as much as I'd, as I'd like to see and as I feel like we were starting to see when it first came out. Uh, the spine is very nicely chamfered. The flipper tab is small, but it functions very well thanks to its aggressive jimping. And the blade rockets out on caged bearings. Uh, the detent feels nearly perfect. It's a little bit soft, but overall, I'm very happy with it. The jigged handles have a cathedral aesthetic with the milled sections growing larger and longer down the length of the knife handle. Toward the top of the handle we have a pivot collar that also doubles as an over travel stop and at the end of the handle is a titanium backspacer with some slight jimping. Overall the ergos are fine, they're not particularly great but the high points for this handle reside in its appearance. The frame lock is nicely achieved with a 50% lock up and thanks to the steel lock interface mounted on the titanium lock bar, it disengages effortlessly. However, this blade has a flaw that many frame locks suffer from. If your fingers rest against the lock bar while holding the knife, the blade will not deploy at all. I adjust my hand to rest on the pocket clip to avoid this issue, and when my hand's in this position, it deploys perfectly. Speaking of the clip, uh, it is a milled piece of titanium that has a very nice appearance, but it also works pretty well with a gradual ramp that lets it slide easily into the pocket. Retention's not high. Uh, if you were hanging upside down, I don't think the knife would, uh, would retain itself very well in your pocket. It would fall right out. Uh, the designer uses the alias Night Morning Design, and while Tucson seems to be using a few different designers, Night Morning's work tends to be my favorite. I appreciate that the designs appear to be original. I've not seen any night morning design, uh, or any Tucson knives for that matter, that are clearly ripping off other makers. Acquiring Tucson knives is done primarily through eBay auctions, and you can get a pretty good deal given the high level of fit and finish as well as the materials used. The downside is the availability is not, they're not very available. Runs on each model tend to be kind of short, but they're typically followed up by a new run soon. Another downside is the shipping time. Uh, these are manufactured in and they ship from China, so your, your wait time is about a month. Uh, use of this knife is primarily EDC, but it could also be a really nice large gentleman's folder. Uh, it clearly functions as a work of art more so than a workman's knife, but uh, that's not to say it can't handle everyday tasks. However, because of the wide tolerances around the pivot, as well as the fact that it uses bearings, I wouldn't recommend this knife for anything that you consider hard use. But overall, this is a really beautiful piece, and it's sure to be a looker when you're showing it to other people. All right, y'all, let's get into it. Disassembling the Tucson TS-232. And as always, I'm using the iFixit Toolkit, uh, thanks to the recommendations of the eminent Nick Shabazz. Um, I've, I'm thinking the screws on this thing are T8, so we're going to start there. T8 here. All right. That's such a lovely knife. Um, so I picked this knife up uh, kind of when when COVID was going on. Um, well, it's still going on, but when everything first kicked off, uh, I was stuck at home. I was on the internet uh, probably more than uh, I think as we all are, probably more than I should be. Um, but I, I saw this guy on uh, eBay and um, just the styling, everything about it really spoke to me it, it you guys are gonna have to put up with my nerd reference here but it looks like something out of Final Fantasy it's just it's just wild just very strange very otherworldly kind of look to it and that's something that you usually see on knives that are exponentially more expensive so anyway enough about that let's get into it Why don't we start off with the pivot here I'm really excited to come on 
really excited to get into this knife with you guys. Um, this is, let's see, that pivot might be free spinning. It is a little bit. Let me see if I can stop it with my finger. No, we're going to have to block it. Okay, so when this happens, I have a second set of Torx drivers that I use for this. So we will block the pivot off using these Torx drivers. Actually, before we do that, let me try it from the other side first, just see if that makes a difference. Yep, that made a huge difference. Not going to need these. Okay, so I'm disassembling it from the show side. So we're going to take the pivot screw out here. As I was saying, this is my first time getting into this knife, and I'm very excited about this because uh, I've enjoyed this knife immensely. And so to find out what the takedown is like on this knife is something that I'm, I'm very interested in. Before we disassemble the pivot, I'm going to go ahead and take out the backspacer here as well. So the scale should lift right off. Okay. Set the screw for the backspacer there. Let me see if I can get that guy out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's the Chicago style screw on the backspacer. Now let's see, this should lift right off. Oh, yep, everything's coming apart here for us. Awesome. Um, look at the milling on the inside of that titanium scale. That's, that's impressive. Um, okay, so here's our backspacer. Oh, and there's a little, I guess that's, it's similar to a blade stop the way that it sits in here, but it's just something of a positioner to hold the backspacer in place. But it's completely, here you guys, it's uh, contained completely inside the scales. So that's nice touch. That's pretty cool. So this will go over here with the backspacer screws. Carefully take the blade out here. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'll lift the blade from the back. Yep, there we go. That made things easier. Okay, so what we have here is uh, our 14C28 in blade with the caged bearings still inside. Let me get those out. Yep, there they go. So let's talk about the caged bearings real quick. Um, the other knives that I've disassembled for you guys have all been on bronze washers. Uh, caged bearings, um, the difference between cage bearings and bronze washers are that with bearings you get a much faster deployment and it's much, I don't know if it's necessarily smoother, but it's, it glides, if that makes any sense. Uh, just, it, it rockets open and it falls shut. That's kind of the advantage of bearings. The, the, the deployment and the closing, the action is very fast on both. So with caged bearings, it's simply a series of bearings inside of a nylon disc or plastic or whatever. And actually, if we look closely at this disc, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's a little bit marred. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind. But uh, when it's done correctly, um, the each individual bearing is a little bit wider than the disc itself. So the disc is not coming too much into contact with the blade or the or the scales. It's the bearings that are making the contact. But the convenience of the disc is that you can handle it uh, like you would handle a washer. So it's much easier to handle rather than loose bearings inside a bearing track. All right, so here's our other set of bearings on this side. Let's go ahead and pop that pivot out first. So this is the other side of the pivot, which again is not D-shaped. So it could potentially be free spinning. For me, I was able to get it out no problem. Let's get that other bearings, uh, bearing a little bit <laughs> other caged bearings out. And here's the other uh, titanium scale. Oh, there was something on the blade I wanted to bring out and bring get that blade back up here. So 14C28 in, it's a budget steel, but it is a damn good budget steel. I'm a big fan and I want to see more 14C28 in. It's um, Sandvik, which I believe is Swedish or, or Scandinavian of some kind. Interesting thing on this, uh, the blade stop is mounted onto the blade. Y'all see that? So it rides on a track inside of the scales. So when it's closed, it's right here. Hang on a minute. Yes, that's correct. When it's closed, it's right here. I'm sorry, when it's closed, it's right there. When it's open, it stops here. So it's kind of a neat design. I've seen that on a few different knives. It's nothing, nothing crazy, but it works. And then the other thing I wanted to look for, yes, okay. This section here with all of the scratching there, that's a detent ball ramp. I don't know how well my camera's picking this up, but there's a nice ramp for the detent ball, which is 
right here, this little ball on the inside of the lock bar. When you open the knife, and when you close the knife, that detent ball rides along this track. So when the knife is in the, let me think about this, when the knife is in the uh, closed position, the detent ball is resting here. It pops out and flies out. That's what causes the fast action of a knife deploying. And then it slides off the track here. And what this, uh, what this ramp allows is for much easier closing. And y'all can correct me if there's something I'm leaving out that is another advantage of the detent ball ramp. But in any case, that's a nice feature. It's nice to see that on this knife. Okay, done with the blade. Something else we're gonna bring up real quick. So this lock bar has a, uh, excuse me, has a steel lock interface. So what this does is it prevents the titanium, uh, if, if you had just a plain titanium lock bar, when titanium meets steel, you get a certain amount of friction that causes lock stick. And uh, it's a very unpleasant <laughs> feeling. Uh, I think you guys can see it on my Spyderco Spidey Chef video. But um, this, has a tie, this has a steel interface, so that prevents that. I'm not going to be disassembling this part. And the reason why is aside from the blade, I would argue that the lock bar or the lock is the most important part of your folding knife. And any tiny adjustment that you make to a, a lock bar uh, is going, or any lock for that matter, it, it's going to make large waves in the function of your knife. So this is not something that you need to maintain. Um, the steel is not going to be eroding itself. Uh, so, and even if you could maintain it, you can't just go buy another steel insert. You would need to send this to the maker. So unless this thing is loosening up, which this is not, I mean, it's rock solid, there's absolutely no reason for you to take this out and, and do anything with it. So just leave this alone. I highly recommend that you, do not uh, that you do not try to disassemble this piece. So we will not be doing that. Okay, moving on. Let's see here. The only other screws we have here, oh, we have the pocket clip. We'll go ahead and take that out. It's a nice milled titanium pocket clip. I'm usually not a fan of milled clips um, because a simple spring clip seems to do the job very well. But I will say this is a well done milled clip. Um, it fits very nicely into this pocket here. And while the retention's not you know, insane. It, it'll come out of your pocket fairly easily. The, it, it goes, it slides into your pocket really well, which is the biggest complaint that I usually have with milled clips is that I have a problem getting them in and out of the pocket. This thing goes in and out very easily. Now, if you're hung upside down in a tree, your knife's going to come falling out. So it depends on your needs, but I think it's a great clip. Uh, and we have this, let's see here. Let me go ahead and set this over here so I don't misplace that. And then we have this screw here on There we go. So that's on this pivot collar. I'm curious if this little pivot collar is a separate piece or not. And it sure looks like it is. Yep, there we go, comes right out. Okay, so just as a reminder to myself, the side that says night morning design sits on the lock bar. We're gonna set our pivot collar right here. And we'll do the same thing for this side as well. I will say these screws seem to have been treated really, really well. They are not, uh, they do not feel like they're just gonna fall apart under the driver. Always happy to see that. I wonder if this guy's gonna come out for us. Let's try this. I may not be able to get this one out, guys. Sure looks like it could come out. Try one more thing here. I don't want to go messing my knife up, but just for the sake of knowing. Come on. Just get a little screw in there and see if we can pop that. Yep, there we go. So there's our other pivot collar. I really like these pivot collars, actually. Uh, I like that they put the, the maker's mark on the collars. I just think that was a really cool touch. All right, guys, so I believe that's our exploded view. All right, guys, hold up before we continue. I just noticed something. Um, these bearings tracks on the, on the inside of either one of these scales are actually removable. 
I'm not sure, that's not the driver I want. I'm not sure what the, what the advantage there is, I guess if you wanted to clean them out, you could clean them out, but I've never seen that before. So that is certainly interesting. So we're gonna set these down. Because aside from lock bar interfaces, if there's a part that comes off a knife, I'm going to disassemble it. This is very interesting. Never seen that before. All right, guys. So here is our exploded view, our proper exploded view. So let's go ahead and catalog these parts. We've got two titanium scales, two bearings tracks that go on the inside of these milled sections, these circular milled sections. 14C28 in blade. Notice also that this has a milled section on either side for the bearings uh, cages. We've got a titanium backspacer, a positioner for the backspacer, as well as a Chicago style screw for the backspacer. We've got two pivot collars. I gotta remember, night morning design goes on the lock side. Two screws for the pivot collars, a uh, screw for the pocket clip, our, our pocket clip two caged bearings, and our pivot screw. And that's it, guys. It's a pretty simple knife to disassemble. What surprises me is the amount of, <laughs> the amount of parts that disconnect from this thing. So let's clean this thing up real fast. Uh, as always, I'm just using a spray bottle with some soap and water. Nothing too crazy. So, so far, I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, with the way that this is disassembled. It's, it's disassembled quite easily. The real test is going to be the reassembly. And we'll find out how well these tolerances uh, come back together here. Get all the soap off of this guy. Notice as well, these milled sections. They did a great job milling out these pockets on the inside of the scale. And there's also some, to a lesser degree, on the lock side. But all that does is save you some weight. And uh, this knife, it honestly, it, for me, it just disappears in the pocket. I don't even think about it. And it really handles itself like a small knife. Um, it's, it's a large knife that feels like a small knife. And that's something that I'm, I'm quite a fan of. Get this guy dried off here. I'm also going to clean these bearings real quick. And one thing about bearings is I don't uh, run them on any, I run them dry. Uh, the reason being that my experience has always been that bearings just run best against, against the surface that they're, they're put up to. Uh, now, I just, I, I believe that using an oil is just going to thicken up the action. I could be wrong, uh, and I'll be the first person to tell you that uh, I may not be the expert on that. I'm going to go ahead and drop these tracks back into place. So they just simply fall into place here. You want to make sure that you're putting the grooved, or the, the, the well, how would you describe that? The worn side with the track. You want to put that up, facing up. So I'm going to be running those bearings dry in any case. Oh, before I do this pivot, though, I need to put the collars back in place. Yep, it's gonna fall right out. We'll go ahead and put this back in place here. Let's get a little bit of Loctite here. Here we are. Remember, always use the blue Loctite. You do not want to use the permanent Loctite. Then you'd have some real problems. Come on. Oh, Lordy. I hate it when that happens. Dry that up a bit. All right, that's better. Yeah, that's fine. Drop that into place. Wrong driver. Where's my T8? There we are. One thing that you can see here, um, let me pop that pivot collar back off. So here's the lock bar. That pivot collar is acting as an over-travel stop. When it's in place, it stops the lock bar from overextending. 
Real nice touch. I'm a, I'm a big fan of that. Watch guys, you'll, you'll see this when I, when I drop this into place here. I apologize for my beat up hands, guys. I, I work with my hands and so they wind up getting pretty rough. So look here, guys. Now that this, this pivot collar is in place, it can't overextend, which is not a problem I've ever had, but you know, if you ask uh, Rick Hinderer, uh, that's a problem. So, <laughs> all right, let's drop this uh, track back into place. Yeah, that's the correct side up. So, drop that track out. We're gonna pop this collar in here. This collar on this side obviously is just strictly uh, static to match the other side. Just get a tiny bit of thread locker on this time. You do want to be sure if you're working on this knife, make sure you thread lock these screws because Lord knows you don't want to lose one of these tiny pivot collar screws. All right, there we go. I'm gonna make sure I don't have any thread locker on my hands here. Let's drop this track. That's the correct side up. Drop this track into place. And now let's get the pivot call uh, the other side of the pivot. Get in here. Awesome. Drop in our cage bearings. And our blade. Yeah, that's, that's better. I always find it's easier to do this with the lock bar depressed. It's nice having that blade stop mounted on the, uh, on the blade. I don't have to worry about losing it. Here's our little positioner for the uh, backspacer. I'm gonna drop that in right here. It just sits there nicely. Put our backspacer in place. Let's put our second set of bearings on right here. Perfect. I've got the track here. This is where it's gonna get a little dicey because I don't want that track to fall out. Um, let me think about the best way to do this. Actually, that's simple. What am I thinking? We're gonna drop this track on top of the bearings with the track side down, the grooved side down, just like this. Simple. I'm gonna lay this, yeah, hard on here first and then drop in on the backspacer here. Hmm. Let's drop the pivot in place first, see if that's going to work. So far, so good. Yep, yep. Yep, guys, I think that did it. So I think the trick there is to... Sorry, the backspacer's moving on. I think the trick there is to lay down the top scale against the pivot before you before you put any pressure anywhere else and really put it down well against that loose track for the bearings. And we're not through the weeds yet, so let's just get everything else in place here. Put a little bit of Loctite on here. go that's enough oh come on all oh, these shaky hands why would somebody with such shaky hands get a hobby as fiddly as disassembling knives what was I thinking I don't know what I was thinking all right let's see how straight that looks looks pretty good to me. Let's tighten that down a little bit more. Yep. All right, so far so good. Last but not least, the pocket clip. Guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I was, I was sweating there for a minute. Here's the thing, though. You know, if you ever run into a problem like that where you just can't, can't identify what's causing the issue, it's... Typically, it's always best to back up, put it in reverse, 
and just reassemble it. And, and a lot of the times you can figure out what the problem is. Okay. A little bit of blade play, just a tiny bit. None. Oof. How's our centering? It's leaning a little bit. Action's good. Oof. Action's great. Let me try tightening a bit and see if I can get that centering fixed. Yeah. Action's a little too. Okay, blade play's gone. Action's great. Flies open. But it is definitely favoring the show side. Now, if I'm going to theorize, I'm going to guess that it has something to do with the, with the loose bearings tracks on the inside of the pivots. So guys, we're going to do a little bit of magic here, and I'll tell you what happens. Ta-da! Okay, guys. Why don't you have a look at this centering? That is substantially better than what we were seeing a minute ago. So, here's what happened, guys. Those tiny little metal discs that are on the inside of either side of the pivot that they were acting as, as I said, as I said a thousand times, <laughs> they're acting as a track for the bearings to run against. Those have to be on the right side. If they're not on the correct side, you wind up with that funky off-center blade. But as for now, action's working great. The blade again is centered. It might be a little tiny bit to the right, but uh, it's pretty centered. So, so what's the verdict on this thing? Uh, it's a great knife. I really love it. It, it sure as hell is quirky. I, I, I will definitely say, it, say that for it. It is a quirky knife. Uh, I, I don't think that those tracks do you any, any good, personally. Um, maybe there's something that I don't understand that allows it to assist in this really fantastic action that this knife has. Um, but yeah, it's odd. This is an odd knife. So I do recommend it for the money. I think it's an excellent knife. I think it's a great, uh, it's a beautiful piece and uh, it's very well finished. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid to disassemble it. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just, just some odd things to it. So anyway, guys, that's been Takedown Talk. Y'all stay well and uh, I'll see you soon.